Okay, I'm gonna play you a piece of uh, audio recording and tell me why, we'll just play, you know, a few seconds of it. Tell me while you're listening to it, uh, well, you can't tell me because I can't hear you, but tell me in your mind uh, whether you can figure out what it is. Let's play the recording now. Okay, that's enough time to guess, I guess. Okay, these are actually the dawn calls of fish. Uh, these are fish in uh, coastal waters off Port Hedland in Western Australia. And uh, apparently this guy, Robert McCauley, and his colleagues at Curtin University in Perth have been recording fish, and they've been identifying different voices of fish choruses that form uh, informally, accidentally, as it were, individual fishes singing at the same time at dawn or at dusk. So it's a kind of, for whatever a biological reason, a marking of the beginning or the end of the day. Now, for those of you who are didn't guess that, uh, okay, I didn't guess it, I wouldn't have guessed it either. For those who did, can you guess which fish were making which noise? The low fog horn ca sounding call? That was the black spotted croaker. The grunting call uh, that sounded like a buzzard was a terrapontid. The third was a batfish that makes a ba 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 call. Okay, so these, uh, number one, I just play this because I think it's really, really great, really awesome. I think we just live on a fantastic planet and I want to celebrate it whenever I can, but I also play it because, uh, of course, we live on a planet that is fragile when ex it's exposed to the kinds of violence we're doing to it on a regular basis. It's, it's a delicate a complicated machine that we're tampering with. In, in this program, we've covered uh, the burning of the Amazon by uh, corporate interests, and we don't even know all the harm that's going to do. We know it's going to do a lot, but uh, and there are things going on around us that we can't explain, and that's scary to me too. For example, plant growth has declined drastically around the world because the air is getting drier. Now, we don't know if that's a result of climate change or not, but it could be. And if it's not, we don't know why it's happening. Now that I got from an article in New Scientist. It says that a lack of water vapor in the atmosphere has caused a global decline in plant growth over the past two decades. Now there's a decline in growth in 59% well over half of the vegetated areas around the world. Now, that doesn't mean that, that plant growth is down by 59%, just to be precise. That means that in 59% of the vegetated areas around the country, there's been some decline in plant growth. Uh, now, it's a vapor pressure deficit. It gets very technical, but here's what we know and don't know. The complex dynamics of climate change may be responsible, says a scientist. There's been a decrease in wind speeds over the oceans, which means water vapor doesn't blow over land quite as much. Uh, that might be causing some of this shortage of, of, of vapor over vegetated areas. The plant is getting warmer. That's climate change. That plays a role because as the air gets warmer, it can't hold as much water vapor. But bottom line is this, this wonderful ecosystem that we live in, this beautiful, diverse, colorful thing, this rich environment that gave us wonders we don't even know about, like this chorus, dawn chorus of fishes, uh, is being endangered by our foolish and greedy actions. If that isn't a reason to rethink our relationship with the planet, I don't know what is. And if it, that isn't a reason to rethink the economic and political system that A, gives people motivation to do that, and then B, gives them enor enormous political power, I don't know what is. So I guess I would just ask you to stand with me and, and uh, against the political forces that are driving us off the rails.